Thank you, Valerie. Thank you, Sawyer. Thank you, Ed. Next up, we have Wendy Weldon and Rob Houck and James coming up to talk about how they influence or not their work and now for something completely different. <laughs> According to Jean Cocteau, asking an artist to talk about painting is like asking a plant to discuss horticulture. <laughs> I'm already feeling like a philodendron about to explain his root system, so I apologize in advance for any gibberish that comes across my lips. Tonight's theme is connections. And I'm going to mention a number of connections. The art world is full of examples of temporary partnerships in which two artists stay true to their individual styles. Robert Motherwell and David Smith, Lee Krasner and Jackson Pollock, Robert and Sonia Delaunay, Pierre Bernard and Henri Matisse, Frida Kahlo and Diego Rivera. Some have held that, the co that collaboration is the future of art. Hilary Sheets wrote in Art News in 2011 that a growing number of artists were making art as collaborators who brainstorm, inspire, and argue. And some, like Christo and Jean-Claude, form teams that produce a single body of work. I'm not convinced that teams will eclipse the artists working alone. This isn't to say that artists aren't connected with other painters in important ways. Painters and writers share a de degree of narcissism. They are motivated by a singular belief that they have something worth communicating and uh, in paint or in words and that other people should either look or read. Painters are connected by what we do and how we do it. We assemble basically a combination of color, line, shape, texture on a flat surface using any number of imp implements to apply powdered pigment suspended in a medium, which could be gum arabic and blackberry honey, walnut oil or linseed oil, or an acrylic poly polymer emulsion. I opted to paint with water media, watercolor, acrylics, and water-based ink. Uh, these, the first two are watercolor and acrylic and collage, and the th this one is um, water-based ink. Initially, this was out of necessity, and, not, and now it's out of habit. When I first started painting decades ago, time was scarce, and I couldn't waste what I had waiting for oil paint to dry. Painters use the same implements, uh, brushes and palette knives. I use both. But I also haunt hardware stores and kitchen supply stores to find anything that you can s use to spread, paint, or scratch, or make marks. Like other painters, my art is part intentional and part accidental. The precise ratio varies with the project, the day, the time. Painting, I believe, is never entirely accidental. That, I think, is the reserve of the chimpanzees, elephants, and horses that have paintbrushes slash, uh, lashed to them by their zookeepers uh, and paint while they're being videoed by Fox Network. <laughs> I suppose it's possible that painting could be intentional from start to finish. But I suspect what you'd wind up with is one of those paint-by-number seascapes that I followed as a kid, or one of Bob Ross's happy landscapes. <laughs> I'm an, ab I'm an abstract, non-objective painter, and I'm connected to all other abstract painters. But categories or labels actually artificially divide artists. I believe that labels, the labels abstract and realistic or non-objective and objective 
are distinctions really without meaning. All painting is, abs is an abstraction. The continuum of abstraction, abstraction stretches from the first handprint placed on a cave wall in Let's Go and Aboriginal dream paintings at one end, through the color field paintings of Rothko and Frankenthaler, the action paintings of Pollock and de Kooning, the realism of Andrew Wyatt, and the photorealism of Bader and uh, Close. No painter no, or school of painting on this continuum definitively captures the objective reality of the physical world or emotions. They simply are too complex for the brain and the eye to perceive or recreate fully. I'm a reductionist painter and therefore I'm connected to all other minimalist painters. I fill up, begin by filling a pay, 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 paper or a canvas with shapes, color, line, texture, and spend most of my time then taking things away and covering things up. And in the process, I'm creating layers that record the painting at discrete points in time. So in the end, I'm literally painting history. I would like to believe that I'm a minimalist because in, pre in a previous life, I was Japanese. <laughs> but there is no, a more prosaic explanation born of a connection between art and science. I'm a social scientist, a political scientist by training. My art is informed by the guiding scientific and philosophical rule that the simplest explanation of a phenomenon is the best explanation. I am also both a writer and a painter, and am not alone in that, as shown by Donald Friedman in the book The Writer's Brush. A.G. Baudelaire, Belloc, Black, Blake, Cocteau, Conrad, Faulkner, Goethe, Gogol, Kafka, Kerouac, Lawrence, O'Connor, Plath, and Poe were writers and painters. Who John Updike has said, satisfied the itch to make dark marks on white paper. Curiously, it appears to be easier for writers to become painters than it is for painters to become writers, which is not good news for me. I share with all painters and writers a measure of masochism. Writers and painters persist though they're never truly satisfied or finished. Pierre Bonnard, who figures in one of my novels, snuck, snuck paint and brushes into museums, and as a compatriot busied the guards, would repaint the paintings hanging on the museum's wall. <laughs> to paraphrase the character in Joel Dichter's The Truth About the Henry Kiber affair, a piece of writing or, or a painting is never good. There's simply a moment when it's less bad than before. <laughs> and I, like other writers and painters, write, run the risk that by working alone of becoming squirrely, at, even at, at the best of times, a risk, by the way, which is compounded if you live on an island that goes into hibernation several months out of the year. Experience has shown that painters and writers need company to become better painters and writers. Picasso and others gathered at Deux Magots on the Boulevard Saint-Germain. The abstract expressionists met in Greenwich Village's Cedar Bar on 8th and University. It's possible that writers are more adept at coming together. Their numbers are larger. They regularly form writing groups. I'm a member of one of John Hoff's groups, and here's a little bit of an ad, and we'll be reading from our novels on March 22nd here. <laughs> an example of the creative power of connection was a chance meeting with Sean Williams, also a member of John Hoff's group, at the West Tisbury Library, uh, uh, pardon me, post office. 
When I told her I, uh, I wasn't coming to the Pathway celebra Valentine's celebration because I was a prose writer, not a poet, and also about, because it was about love, which God knows I'm not an expert on. Um, and her response was, we'll write a poem. And I did. I wrote my first poem, perhaps my only poem. But the important thing was that I was pushed by a very talented person to create outside my comfort zone. Getting to painters together is a bit like herding cats. And male painters are particularly inept at making and sustaining connections with each other. I'm fortunate, however. Every Thursday morning, I meet with Wendy Whalen, Leslie Baker, and other talented artists to monoprint at Featherstone. I'm there because Leslie Baker encouraged me to try it, and Nick Thayer took the time to teach me how. It is a rare opportunity to experience cross-fertilization, if you forgive the return to Cocteau's horticultural metaphor. Wendy and Leslie and I work side by side in, in very different ways. We see each other, what each other is doing and how it's done. It's not a question of mimicking each other's work. Their com camaraderie is an invitation to experiment, to learn, and above all, to take risks that could enrich my printmaking and carrying over to my painting and even writing. And I thank them every time I'm there. I also want to end by thanking Pathways for bringing together artists of every stripe and creating the closest thing to Dumago or the Cedar Bar on this island west of Paris and north of New York City. <laughs> He, he is a writer as well as a great printmaker and painter. Um, not so good at the writing part, but first I'd like to speak a little bit about my process. I usually have no plan before I start printing or painting. I call it working from the seat of my pants. Printing at Featherstone is where many visual ideas start for me. I soak my white paper and begin inking up an acrylic plate. I pick colors that speak to me in the moment and shapes that are appealing. I work fairly quickly until I'm out of options. I towel dry the printing paper, lay it on the plate, and hand crank the press. I peel off the paper, and there it is, often a surprise. I hang it up to examine it, and I ask myself, do I like it? Is this what I had in mind? Now what am I going to do with it? And the process is underway. I usually print over the original print a few times until it is either a complete failure or has a sense of completeness, or can be reworked back in my painting studio. I'm printing now with golden acrylic open paints, which were designed for plein air painters, which are, now, which are compatible with my regular acrylic paints that I use in my studio. I shifted from water-based oil paints because I couldn't leave, I can never leave any of my work alone. I always have to keep reworking it. And the acrylic and the inks were not that friendly. The process continues into my studio where I may jump into a canvas with a print, with a print piece as my inspiration. Again, I just start painting, eliminating the white part of the canvas and I want the paintings to have energy and movement. Color is my real addiction, and the brighter, the better. And you can see, I mean, I brought a couple of colorful pieces in. The, the painting, um, the canvas, is a painting inspired by the temples in Cambodia, where I was last winter. And the monotype is mounted on wood, and that's got a couple of barns in it. That's sort of my, my image that I use a lot in my work. And then this piece is a, another monotype done at Featherstone and then painted on again in my studio when I get back um, into my studio after printing. So this, this evening, the theme is about connectivity, collaboration, or influence from other artists in the workplace. I work printing with four other printmakers. 
which by the way, I am not. I am a painter who prints. I am not a printmaker, but I'm learning how to be one. We all tend to be more abstract in our styles. Rob and Leslie's work is completely non-objective. I bounce between the non-objective work and the abstract work with recognizable images, like my barns and stones. As I watch Rob and Leslie print, I notice that they're using black. I look at my plate and I pick up a bigger brush or a roller and I begin laying on some carbon black paint. Hmm, I'm definitely being influenced by them. That is just one example of what goes on for me while printing with other artists. I remember when our wonderful print guru, Nick Thayer, was in the studio, he would talk about how our loose process was helping him to be less controlling. It is validating and supportive to have my fellow artists throw ink around, try new printing techniques, go for broke, and not worry about the outcome. When we try to control the process, the outcome is not always what we are hoping for. So now switching to my painting studio, um, where I work with my partner James, um, we have a two-story building. I'm upstairs and he's downstairs. As you can observe, he is a master draftsman. James's work are the two drawings um, to the left of Ed Grosta's photographs, and then the oil painting of Ray Ellis um, on the other side of my monotype. So our styles are not even close. Our process is to also totally different. James helps me a lot. He, he'll come upstairs to grab some water or a snack, and I will be stuck in one of my paintings. And I ask him for help, like, what can I do? I don't know what to do. And he comes up with some great suggestions, like adding more of one color, do, nudge the composition a bit, add a line or a shape or a darker color. I try these, and often one or more of the suggestions helps me move forward with action. I think my looseness and my use of color interest him, but I'm not sure it has any influence over him. We share our art books with each other, pointing out which paintings or drawings we love and why. We talk about our work and art in general. Our influence over each other does not have obvious income, outcomes, but certainly our work changes some because we work together. It is so helpful to have other artists comment about my paintings and prints, talk about their work and techniques and opinions. Sometimes I can't see what needs to happen in my work, and these wonderful artist friends with whom I work prod me and support me. So um, if you, do you have any questions for, for the three of us? Um, we'd be happy to answer them or try anyway. Um, or, or James, do you want to talk a little bit about your drawings? No? I'm like the botanist who... who uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay. <clears throat> yeah, the, uh, the but, word is a visual, a visual. So the words can't really explain the word. The word has to stand up for itself. And as you can see, and this isn't what I usually do, what I usually do is like this, in terms of a doodle, it becomes an organic growth. And from that organic growth becomes the picture, so it's never finished. So does anybody have any questions for either of uh, Do you have a studio? Can we visit it? Sure. You can come to our studio. It's, it's two miles towards Kuna. Well, I'm not from here, so I don't know where from. But, well, but she will help me. Yeah, I give you my phone number. You're welcome to come to our studio anytime. Do you have a card? I don't have a card. <laughs> no, I, it's one of those things I don't carry around. I don't really have one, but um, it's a good idea. Thank you. Any questions for any of us? Well, we're around if you want to, if you have any questions. So thanks, everybody, and thank you, Pathways, for...